Hello, guys. I'm your daily trader, Ben. And today we're missing Kagan, but that is okay. Today we're going to be discussing some variations of the lit template. Now, what do I mean by lit template? We could refer to liquidity inducement theorem. We could refer to liquidity inducement trap trading. And we can even refer to beat the market maker method by Steve Morrow. In my opinion, I do not believe anyone individually came up with this method, right? I, I have seen this being been used now since 2014. So to say that this is new is completely wrong. Uh, there's so much controversy saying that certain people came up with this method. However, you know, it's just generally how the market moves. If you understand how the market moves and how liquidity moves specifically, then you can call it whatever you want to call it. But I noticed certain communities come up with a template in which I have now seen for almost a decade. And I, I wanted to make it a little bit more apparent to you guys. Now, let's go ahead and jump pretty much straight into it and go over what the lit template is, the BTMM template, and how they were traded in both London and New York. I'm not gonna give away every single variation because I don't want to piss certain people off. However, I believe that what I will provide in this video will generally help a ton of people out. Now, the things that we're going to be covering are based off of time as confluence, right? The liquidity structure seen, right? We need to see what liquidity is being swept And these are really the main three things we have to look at, right? And of course, marking our POIs. So let me gen uh, generate a scenario here in which you guys can understand what this template is. Again, I've seen so many people use this template. I'm not saying any individual came up with it. If anybody were to come up with it, I would say it would be ICT. ICT is obviously a very skilled individual in the markets, and a lot of people have revamped his strategies for the most part. In a way, this is just another version of the market maker model, which was originally created by ICT. Anyways, let's hop right into this video now. When I am looking at the Asian session, I need to understand how the Asian liquidity moves. That is the first thing we're going to understand. All right. What is going on in the Asia? Well, the Asia, as we know, if you've seen my previous videos on the daily cycle, you'd understand that the Asian session either acts as inducement or liquidity, right? Now, if we understand the daily cycle, we can have an even better understanding of where price is going, right, um, to stop hunt during the Frankfurt or London session. Right. If you saw my video on the daily cycle, you understand that if we're coming from a downtrend, we're looking for a resting POI just to get tapped to continue that trend lower. However, a lot of you may be noticing that you're actually getting tapped out of that POI into something higher and then price is going lower. You know, if you were to stick to a strict plan, both of these POIs wouldn't necessarily still be valid. Right. And you'd still be able to get in the trade. And if you have a good RR, then hopefully you would have recovered most of your loss back from that first trade you've taken. So what is the lit template? What is the BTMM template? What is this ICT template that I'm talking about? Well, the first thing we have to understand is that the Asian session could act as inducement. Knowing that we must sweep the highs here is a form of inducement. Why? Because everything within this Asian session is liquidity, right? We do not really wanna be trading any of this liquidity until the London Open or really the Frankfurt Open. My session timings for the Asia are 18 to one. However, please test out 18 to 22. You'll probably find some more possibilities with 18 to 22 than you will with 18 to one. I know that REM, WWA, liquidity inducement theorem, their community, they focus on 18 to one. Right, and thank you for those in the community to share that information with me. Um, and then 18 to 22 is something that I've been working on personally that I believe actually works better than 18 to 1. 
But I'm going to let you guys back test those times and let you find out for yourself. For now, let's go over this variant. So a lot of you might see that there would be a resting POI above. And now we understand that we have a liquidity buildup in the Asia that is going upwards, right? We have an upwards channel liquidity buildup occurring within the Asia. Now, whenever we see a buildup going in a particular direction, right? For example, this buildup, this channel buildup is inducing buyers in the market within the Asian session. So considering that logic, right? And considering that buyers are entering the market, what are market makers going to do? The market makers are most likely going to continue to buy price out of the Asian, right? And they're going to stop hunt all the breakout traders here where, these, where there are buy stops. And then they're gonna take all of them out to sustain this run, all right? So what is going on here? All right, we have this buildup, right? Inducing buying. We have buy stops that are being triggered right here. And then we are tapping into this POI and assuming we are going to come down. Now, that is what most smart money traders are going to be doing. They're going to be looking for a tap into this POI here. Now, what is validating this POI besides this type of setup? Time, right? Now, if we are to have just swept this Asian box and it hasn't been 2 a.m. or if it's not 3 a.m., keep in mind, I am in the U.S., I am on the East Coast. So for me, London Open is at 3 a.m. and the Frankfurt Open is at 2 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Anyways, to say that price has gotten to this POI before 3 a.m. or before 2 a.m., if price has reached this zone, I immediately am invalidating it. I do not want to take it. This just becomes inducement to the POI above, right? Just because something sets up structurally or from a price structure standpoint does not mean it's a valid trade. We have to be looking at time, right? I don't know if you guys have ever traded the NOS 100, but back test the 930 open. Notice how price is going to sweep from 8.30 to 9.30, and then 9.30 is gonna produce the real move. Why? Because that's the stock market open. So what's gonna happen here? We have this buildup inducing buy, and I'm sorry for repeating myself. We know that this is occurring right here. These are the stop hunts based off our daily cycle that we should go short. However, it is before 2 a.m. It is before 3 a.m. Really, our most probable trade is going to happen around the London Open, right? So what's going to happen is this is going to induce buying, try and stop out all of these buyers right here, right? We may not clear the Asian lows. But then what's going to happen around 3 a.m. is price is going to come all the way back. And this is where the true mitigation is going to happen, right? So we have almost one, two hits to the high, right? And once we get these two hits to the high, right, we can assume once we've hit this POI and maybe we'll have some confirmation entries. And there might even be, like in my other videos, a divergence in price to confirm that price is now going to short for the remainder of the day. Now, this is the most generic London um, session setup that we are going to see over and over and over again, especially for pairs like GJ, EU, and GU. This does work across numerous pairs, but hopefully this variant, which is another cycle of the daily cycle, another variant of the daily cycle, helps many people understand why price is doing what it's doing. Now this next variant is going to be for the New York session, right? Now there are many different variants that have their own opening plays, right? London is not always going to sweep the highs and then run. However, that is the most probable variant there really is in my opinion. Once we know where London and Frankfurt have swept, we know the direction of the market. Knowing that we have swept Asian highs here and the market has continued, well, can't we just assume that New York is gonna continue the move? Well, I don't know. What other variants are there, right? So let's get into the New York session, right? So let's assume here. 
Let me go ahead and delete all of this. We weren't trading London and we were strictly only trading the New York session. And let's even assume that price didn't stop hunt the lows or highs. It just made a run. All right, now we're trying to figure out what to do in the New York session. Now, this was something I learned back in 2014 uh, by Steve Morrow, uh, back when I was a part of his boot camp a long time ago. Anyways, here's this. Again, you're gonna have your Asian liquidity buildup. All right. Now, what is some added confluence? So let me preface what should happen from a three to five day look back. From a three to five day look back, we should already assume three days of drop and or three days of rise. And the saying is after three days of rise, the market needs more guys. And what does that mean? It means price should start accumulating. Right? And then stop hunt the accumulation. All right? Now, understanding this and understanding that we've already had one, two, three hits to the low, and this is our buildup in Asia, right? And we're having a crazy run going on to the downside. Let's assume before the New York Open that during London, we had another strong push down and then price decided to retrace. We had another strong push down and then price decided to retrace. And then we have a third push down. And now we have three cycles of drop, also known as price cycle inducement to the downside. Now, understanding that after three days of drop, the market must chop. I didn't write that in, but that's the saying. After three days of drop, the market must chop. Right? If we see this, right, this is now where the New York Open should be. And what is going to happen? You're going to see a lot of traders here try and buy this up, right? Buy stops are going to be triggered right here after this accumulation. But what's going to happen is price is going to come all the way back down taking out all of these buy stops, right? And now all these sell stops are gonna be triggered to continue this move, but rather once we stop hunt this chop into a POI from the past, we should start to see the market make a huge reversal, all right? These huge reversals only come after three days of drop or three days of rise. Now, is that to say that this variant doesn't work? without three days of drop or rise. No, this variant works regardless. You may not see a massive reversal without these three days of drops or rise, but what you will see is most definitely a correction in the market, right? And we're most likely going to take out this first objective here and then start dropping. What I recommend a lot of people do is just go back day by day and look at the structure of the market, right? It's not rocket science. You don't have to learn this from anybody, right? You can simply teach yourself, right? Just by going back each day, every single day and back testing the different scenarios that there are. Price can only move one or two different ways, right? It can only move a couple of different ways, right? If we have the Asian session, right? We can do a couple things, right? We can either have a hit to the high and run. All right, cool. We can have a hit to the low run. Cool. For London, this is London session, by the way. We could have a hit to the high, hit to the low run, right? And or we can have a hit to the low, hit to the high run based off of um, Frankfurt and London. Now for New York, right? If we hit the high of London, we continue down. What could we, what could we assume? Knowing that our bias is now short, for the rest of the day, we can assume New York continuations, right? Find something for it to mitigate close along the Asian lows here for it to continue. And the same goes for the buy side of things, right? Now, what if London just absolutely rocketed down? Well, let's look for price cycle inducement. Let's look for these three things to chop, drop. Let's look for that accumulation stop point and then run. 
right? There's only so many things price can do, right? Go back into time, study one pair, and eventually you're going to start to see all of this like clockwork. It's not, I don't want to say it's not difficult. It is extremely difficult to start to identify this. And if you haven't watched my video on 2020 chart vision, I highly recommend it because it's going to help you understand how to view the liquidity and how to understand these movements within these price cycles, within these templates. All right, well, hopefully this gives you guys a better understanding on what the lit template is, what the BTMM template is, what the ICT template is, all the credit goes to them. Um, but definitely do some back testing as this is gonna help out probably a ton of you if you guys start to recognize these patterns as it's really gonna help with directional bias. All right, I've given videos on the daily cycle, weekly cycle, liquidity injections, and now this type of template. If you are able to start to combine all of these things, then you are going to have a really good uh, hit rate within the market. With that being said, happy trading, y'all. I'm out.